Well, hello and welcome to program six in the series of programs and tutorials designed to help you learn TradeStation Easy Language. Um, if you are not on our email mailing list, then please go to markplex.com. That's M A R P. Sorry, M A R K P L E X.com, and you can subscribe here and uh, also unsubscribe at any time that you uh, you wish to do so. So today's program is based on some of the principles that we covered back in tutorial 13. So I just want to give you a quick overview of how it works and then we'll get into the nitty gritty and look at the uh, inputs in detail. So essentially what happens is each time a new turning point occurs on the chart, we compare that with all the turning points that have occurred previously. If the new turning point is within a specified user tolerance of a previously found turning point, then the two are combined and the weighting of this turning point is increased by one. So in this way what, what we do is uh, we only display on the chart the turning point levels that have re uh, got a certain uh, weighting and that weighting that they need to achieve before being displayed is also a user input. Now what we've done in this program is just go a little bit further and say this may or may not represent an area of support and resistance. So in order to make a trade we need three things to occur. Firstly we need the uh, the new combined a new combined pivot to um, happen and for the weighting of that combined pivot to be above a certain amount. Secondly, we need a filter to be true and in this particular case I've set the filter based on stochastics and I'll show you how I've done that in a moment. And then the third thing is to go long what we would need is more of these uh, turning point lines to be below the latest found pivot than above. And uh, the opposite of that, if we were going to go short, we need more of the turning point lines to be above the most recently found pivot than below it. Now there is a slight complexity to that but I will explain that when we get into the inputs. What I've also included here is some trade management. We've got a trailing stop which is represented by this red line and then we've got two target levels and uh, we take off a certain number of the contracts at the first level and the, uh, the rest at the second level. So let's just have a look at the inputs. Now incidentally, whenever uh, we put in a uh, amount like combined val, which determines how close a new pivot has to be for the uh, pivots to be combined, that is expressed as a multiple of the minimum move for the particular thing that we're looking at. So um, here we go, expressed as multiple of minimum price moves. So for example, for foreign exchange, which goes to five decimal places, that would be 0.0001. So that's a combined value. Anyway, let's just go through the inputs one at a time. Uh, number of pivots, that's the number of items that we have in the array that we're continually going through. Combined val, I've already explained that um, when we find a new pivot, we take the existing pivot stored in the array and if the new one is within this amount of the old pivot then we combine them. Line sensitivity determines whether we display the uh, the pivot or turning point on the chart or not and uh, incidentally I use, use those terms interchangeably uh, pivot and, and turning points. It also determines whether we get into a trade in other words the uh, combined pivot needs to have a weighting uh, greater than or equal to this line sensitivity for it to be valid to make a trade. Left strength and right strength determine what uh, makes a pivot and uh, you can look up that just looking at the uh, trade station pivot function. Now die vector this is the thing that I mentioned uh, generally if this is set to zero then we just need the uh, for example for a long trade that the lines below the latest found pivot must be greater than the number of pivots above the latest found pivot. What this does is just mean that we just need more than just a, a simple maj majority of one greater than the other by this amount. 
my var 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, these are the inputs for your filters, so unless you use them, they're, they're not used. Contracts, the number of contracts that we buy or sell. And then trailing value, again expressed as the minimum price move. This is the trailing value, the first target, second target. Incidentally, um, the second target is added on to the first target. So for example, the uh, if we got into a trade, the first target would be equal to entry price plus 70 times minimum price move. The second target would be equal to entry price plus 210, in other words, 70 plus 140 times the minimum price move. First target contracts is the number of contracts that we take off at the first target. And then to uh, to explain the, uh, the these three inputs, I'm just going to quickly show you them on the chart. It's probably just easier to do that. So for example, uh, format strategies, the um, combined color at the moment we've got set to blue. We could make that, uh, for example, black. Just going to set that to black and show you what the chart looks like now. You can see those lines have gone from blue to black. Um, the, the one that controls whether we show the combined lines is this one. If we set this to false, then those horizontal lines will disappear. Just going to say close. So you can see we've still got the, uh, the trade happening, but we can't see the combined lines. And then finally, the, uh, oops, I'm just going to, no, no point changing it here because it won't have an effect. What we need to do is go format strategies and go down, change that to false. And then you'll see that the trade management lines that show the trailing stop and the targets are still there. And the reason for that is because this is a trade that happened uh, today. If we go back to some of the historic trades that uh, didn't happen today, then you should see that uh, you won't see those trade management lines appearing. So let's just go back and uh, look at the trade we were, we were looking at. And uh, I'm just going to go back and change all those things back to what they were. So the other thing I wanted to show you was the um, filters and these are things that you can change yourself. So this is really more of a, um, rather than a strategy, it's more of a strategy template because what really is going to determine whether you get into a trade or not are these filters. Now in the, uh, the one I'm going to provide on the site, these are all going to be set to false. But what I've done in this example is set filter one to be slow D less than 20 and slow D uh, greater than 80 for filter S1 and those figure then into whether we get into a trade or not. Um, the other thing that I built into here is the um, I've tested to see if we're doing optimization and if there's any optimization going on then we don't draw things on the chart which we really don't need and uh, that takes time. The other thing I've done differently from uh, tutorial 13 is tutorial 13, you remember, we cascaded the template. In this case, we just go the through the, t the sorry, talking too fast. In tutorial 13, we cascaded the array. Uh, in this program, what I do is actually go through using an index so that we're not having to keep, keep sorting uh, or rather cascading the array. Anyway, um, I hope this might be of use to you and uh, thank you very much for your attention. Again, if you're not on the Markplex email list, then please go to markplex.com and join the list. Thank you.